right, I am in Washita National Forest right now. Just beautiful back here. Um, I'm on a Forest Service road looking for a camp spot where I can park for the night. They have these little service roads where I can uh, um, drive and, and have little spots off to the side where I can uh, just park my car for the night. Haven't seen a soul back here yet. I've only been drawing the road for about half a mile. Uh, hopefully I'll find a good spot. There's a, a lake up here. Um, maybe I'll be able to go to the lake with Bo. All right, so funny story. I was driving and got on a pretty uh, rugged road here. This is a forest service road and I turned off because one of the paths lead down, led down to uh, the lake and I was like, oh, I wanna camp by the lake. But uh, as I was driving, my brake warning light came on. So <laughs> I thought, you know what? I need to give my car a break for a second. Um, hopefully there's not any issues with the brakes. It's still performing fine. Um, but I'm gonna go uh, take a walk real quick, see if I can get to the lake, see what it looks like, and then uh, decide if I wanna um, turn around or maybe rest here for the night. It looks pretty flat up ahead, so I think it'll probably be fine um, as long as this road continues pretty normally. Um, I just have to be very easy on the brakes, so this is just part of the uh, adventure. You uh, got to expect things to go wrong and you learn along the way, so I will definitely be more gentle going forward as I drive on these back roads, especially if my car is in four-wheel drive, so... It's uh, day one, so it's gonna be a learning process. Bo's just loving life. He's a woods dog. Loves to just run around out here. So secluded, not a soul, feels awesome. I am loving it so far. All right, so this is the spot where I was gonna park my car. As you can see, there's a little campfire, but really no view of the lake. It's blocked by all these trees. You can see it barely. Doesn't really seem worth it to me to risk coming back here with potential brake issues with my car. So I think I'm gonna head back and try and find a, a spot that's a little less rugged, at least for tonight. One of Bo's nicknames is Water Dog because he just loves the water. Anywhere he finds water, he's gonna be there. Is that fun, Bo? You like it? Go boy. Go boy. Go get a squirrel. Fun fact, Bo has caught and eaten a squirrel before. Caught it in the wild. It was very impressive. Squirrels are pretty smart, so they're not very easy to catch. And then I was like, well, you eat what you kill. And I looked at him and he looked at me and he just proceeded to eat the whole thing. The whole squirrel, tail included. He is a, uh, he's a good country boy. I got him from some owners who lived out in the country and he, uh, that's his home habitat. So he feels right at home out here. This is, uh, He's a perfect wilderness adventure companion. And he doesn't run far away from me. He, he, he stays close to me. He'll, he'll get a little head and then he'll, he'll stop. He'll turn around and look at, look at me. He's a good dog. He'll be a lot of fun out here. I have, check it out. I've already gotten two ticks. Can you believe that? Three. This is unbelievable. I am just covered in ticks. They've just swarmed me. One, two, three, four. I think there's more, but I don't see them on the first day, guys. And I've, I've never had, I think I've had one tick in my life. So it's just part of it. Bo, come over here. You probably shouldn't drink that water. Now I'm concerned. All right, let's pull these out one thing at a time. Take a breather. All right, so just removed about 
12 ticks off my legs with my nifty tweezers. That was a fun experience. And somehow Bo didn't have a single tick. So I guess they just like me, or maybe he's just a lot smarter than I am and knows how to avoid the ticks, and I don't. So, uh, all right, well, now we're gonna check the Monty, see if she's doing any better, if uh, a little rest has helped. I pushed her pretty hard today. We probably went like 600 miles, I don't know. So maybe maybe she's gonna be feeling better after her rest and the, the brakes will be all right to, to scoot out of a little less rugged spot tonight. Uh, I'm gonna go check the fluid and see if the light comes back on and then um, decide what we, we're gonna do next. All right, so fantastic news. I checked the brake fluid level and it was above the max, so plenty of brake fluid. That's certainly not the issue. And I turned it back on and the brake fluid light is now off. So I'm thinking I, uh, I just pushed her a lot today. We went down some steep hills and I'm carrying a heavy load. So maybe putting her in four wheel drive and, and going in some of these roads as well, put a lot of pressure on her. So I'm just gonna get out of here in two wheel drive and then uh, get to a nice more incognito or uh, more less rugged spot for tonight um and then hopefully i don't have any more ticks so i just saw some crawling on the hood of my car so man they're everywhere out here all right so i found this nice open spot R plenty of room so no uh close brush for more ticks and it's right off the main forest road right here still a little a pretty area really like this forest back here it's, it's so nice so peaceful I haven't seen a single car out here no view of the lake but hey it's uh i'm not complaining it's pretty nice and uh the weather is great i'm gonna sleep well tonight good morning night one of sleeping in my car is in the books and now I am making some coffee. Bo's having breakfast. And I must say, I had a pretty odd experience last night and it's still pretty odd, actually. Um, there were no cars out here at all when I was driving. And as you can see in this campsite, there's just a bunch of trash. No sign of anyone staying here or anything, so. I assumed it was vacant. Um, probably around 10.30, droves of cars started coming by. And I had several caravans show up. I don't know if it was the same people coming back and forth, but there were probably three or four caravans of at least three or, three or four cars that would show up, come to my campsite, look around, some, multiple cars pulled back here and then left one person and this was in a caravan with all trucks actually shot off what it sounded like fireworks this is at like 11 15 at night it was like a, a pop rocket gun it wasn't a real gun but it was like pop 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 it's like what is happening right now why are these people driving around so late at night apparently they all want my campsite it was pretty strange and then i had another person show up at 6 30 this morning came back here drove around in a little loop and i i woke up i looked at him and he we just stared at each other and he drove away what are you people doing out here why what why are you not are you getting a campsite super late and what was this guy doing in the morning? It was it was weird. Um, strange. <sighs> kind of just marks this whole first camping day in this Washita National Forest area. I'm going to be happy to be leaving here. <laughs> so, uh... Anyway, making coffee right now. I'm going to go pick up my uh, America the Beautiful Pass at uh, um, Hot Springs National Park. I did, decided not to go there because it's actually not that cool. Um, the hot springs are all indoor. 
I thought they were going to be outdoor, but they're indoor. So I couldn't even bring Bo with me. Um, there is some cool history there. It's a very old place. And I think a lot of gangsters used to, used to come, like Al Capone. So that's pretty cool. But um, nothing spectacular, it seems, with the hiking they have. Um, I'd rather go west. I've seen a lot of woods in my life in Georgia. I kind of want to want to go west i'm thinking i may go to sedona but we'll see uh i gotta get through the uh, great plains first all right my coffee's boiling i will uh talk later after i enjoy my good cup of joe cheers all right so i made it down to hot springs national park visitor center i bought the uh, america the beautiful pass and then i was talking to the lady at um the counter and asking her about the hot springs and she goes like yeah i've been here since 2007 i've never even been to the hot springs i don't even have a desire to it's like honestly i don't like living here there's too many tourists <laughs> i was just like well what do you like doing here and she was like well there's this trail called hickory nuts and it is a beautiful overlook of the lake and i'm like that's what i was trying to do yesterday so this uh overlook was only about 20 minute detour off my route heading up to i-40 and it is gorgeous check it out look at this you can see so far it, it just doesn't do it justice but it is just beautiful out here panoramic views all the way on the other side too so i finally got to uh experience some of uh some beauty from washita out here it was a nice very nice to be able to see all this before i uh headed out after my experience last night. So I'm gonna head back now to um, I-40 and head west. I think I mentioned Sedona earlier. There's no way I'll make it to Sedona. I might make it to Amarillo tonight. Um, it's a, it's a, good, a good, a lot of driving I'm gonna do out today, but um, it'll be worth it. So one more view of the shot out here, it's just, it's so pretty. You can see so far. It's Lake Washita. And another cool thing is the company I used to work for invested in timberlands. And uh, one of the properties I did accounting for, um, for one of the portfolios, had several thousand acres out here um, in uh, Washita. Actually, it was probably about 20,000 acres. It was a lot. It was all leased land. Um, so I, I could have driven by some of the land that we, we owned in the in my previous company, but um, really, really pretty out here. All right.